Hey everybody, glad you could drop by again. It's great to have friends coming over for a visit. Right now I'm also being visited by my good friend Charnette. Hi there, glad you dropped by. Now, Charnette's been uh, practicing the Ten Commandments and I think Charnette, you have memorized the first three, is that right? Yes, I have. Do you want to show our friends out there uh, what, wh how much you know? Okay. Commandment one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Excellent, Charnette. That's a good, good start. And commandment two. This one's a little longer. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of anything that is found in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, but showing mercy unto thousands that love me and keep my commandments. That is very good, Charnette. That's a long one. Do you think you know commandment three? Let's try. All right, go ahead. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Excellent, Charnette. Now, I know that vain means empty, and that we're not to say God's name in an empty, meaningless way that robs God or empties God of his glory. But what's required of us in the third commandment? What are we supposed to do? Well, good that you asked because that's the question in today's catechism. What is required in the third commandment? And what is required? Well, let's see. The third commandment requires the holy and reverent use of God's name, titles, attributes, ordinances, words, and works. But what does all that mean? Well, holy, we're to, we're to treat God's name in a holy and reverent way, and holy means devoted and separated. When we say God's name, we don't say it as though it's just any old common name of just anybody. We recognize that God's name is special, devoted to him alone. Uh-huh. But what does reverent mean? Well, reverent means deep, solemn respect. So when we use God's name, we're to do so with a specially devoted respect for that name. Oh. Well, what is God's name anyway? Well, his very special name was revealed to Moses when he spoke from the burning bush. You know that that account in the book of Exodus. Uh -huh, I think so. Yeah, where, where, where he, Moses saw that a bush was on fire, but it wasn't burning up, it wasn't being consumed, it wasn't turning to ashes. It was still, the bush was still in good condition. And Moses thought that this looked very strange, so he went to get a closer look and a voice was speaking from it. That was the Lord, wasn't it? It certainly was. And God was telling Moses that he wanted to go back, him to go back to Egypt and tell the king that it was time to let the people of Israel go. He was go the Lord was going to release them from the bondage of slavery. Yeah, I remember that story. We've been learning about it in Sunday school recently. That's right. And in that conversation, Moses at one point asked God what his name was. And God said that his name was Yahweh. Yahweh? Yes, Yahweh. Now, some Bibles, some versions of the Bible will translate the, the name as Jehovah, which is close, but the more correct translation is Yahweh. What does that mean? Well, Yahweh means I am that I am, or I am who I am. So, and in short, it means I am. So God is saying that that is his special name and we're to treat that name with a great deal of respect. And, and then when God the Son became man, 
His name on earth was Jesus. And another name he was given was Emmanuel. But does the Bible say that we're to honor God's name? Oh, yes, it does. Psalm chapter 29, verse 2 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. In Psalm chapter 11, verse 2, we read, Holy and awesome is his name. And in Psalm chapter 138, verse 2, we read, I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness, for you have exalted above all things your name and your word. And in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 3, Moses says, For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. And in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 58 and 59, it gets very serious. And Moses says, if you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sickness. So important is it to honor God's name in the prayer that Jesus taught us. The first thing that we are to ask God is that our, his name be hallowed or made holy. It says, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Matthew 6 verse 9. So we are to honor God's name. Anything else about God that we're supposed to honor? Yes, his titles as well. What's a title? Well, a title is like a name, but it describes someone's position or job. Uh, for example, m the students in my class, if I go into a, uh, a school class, they would call me Mr. James. Mr. is my title. James is my last name. Mr. means that I'm an adult and I'm a man. What's the name of your doctor? Dr. Smith. Well, Smith is his last name and doctor is his title. It describes what he does for a living. Now, if we look on this money, here's a $20 bill. Whose picture is on the $20 bill? That's Queen Elizabeth. That's right. Now, Elizabeth is her first name and Queen is her title. It describes what her job is. She is the queen. Does God have any titles? Yes, he does. God, some of God's titles are creator, king of kings, lord of lords, God almighty, God most high, father, light, lord, lord of lords. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. God has many, many titles. Okay, so we're to show honor to God's names and titles. Anything else? Well, we're to honor his attributes. What are attributes? Well, attributes are features that are used to describe something or someone. For example, look at this piece of paper. What are some of its attributes? Well, it's very thin. Yep, it's very thin, thin like paper. But it's shaped like a rectangle. It has four sides and four corners, and it's white, and there's nothing else on it. Okay, so those are its attributes. Okay, so that you're describing a piece of paper. But what are God's attributes? Well, some of her, his attributes to describe God are that he is gracious, holy, he is good, he is omnipotent. What's that? That means he's powerful, all powerful. He is omnipresent, which means he's everywhere. He's righteous. He's omniscient. That means he knows everything. He is love and on and on and on. God has so many attributes. So we should speak of his attributes in a reverent way? Yes. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 8, we see a vision 
of heaven, and there are four living creatures, and here's what had happens. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes all around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So you see that these heavenly creatures who are thinking deeply about one of God's attributes, his holiness, they do not rest but continually praise him in heaven. And they constantly are saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. They never speak casually about God's holiness ever. That's just one of his attributes. So saying things like, holy cow, when we're surprised, isn't really okay? Nope. You see, holiness is an attribute of God, and we shouldn't be saying holy cow or holy moly or holy anything. God is holy, and that's who we are to say is holy. God is separated from the common, so we wouldn't, shouldn't treat such a great attribute of God in such a common way. Hmm, okay, so should we should honor God's names, titles, attributes, anything else? his ordinances. What are his ordinances? Well, ordinances, God's ordinances are the rites or ceremonies that the church does in his honor that the Lord Jesus gave to us. What are they? Well, the two ordinances of the church are baptism, when we are immersed under water um, as a testimony of our faith in Christ, and the Lord's Supper, or communion. So when communion or the Lord's Supper is celebrated, it should be done with the utmost respect. When a baptism is performed, it should be done with the utmost respect and reverence. In fact, whenever God's people meet for, re for worship, they should do with reverence and awe for God. Worship is not a wild circus, nor is it just a casual time to hang out. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40, we, the Apostle Paul says, Let all things be done decently and in order. So, if things are to be done decently and in order, I guess I shouldn't be talking during the worship service, should I? Nope, that's not honoring to the name of the Lord. But what should I be doing? Well, you should be paying attention. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, it says, Walk prudently when you go into the house of God, and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know that they do evil. Do not be rash with your mouth, and let not your heart utter anything hastily, that means too quickly, before God. For God is in heaven, and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Hmm. Wow, that's serious. Okay, so we should honor God's name, titles, attributes, ordinances. What else? His word. God's word? You mean the Bible? We're supposed to honor the Bible? Yes, because the Bible is the very word of God, and we must treat it with respect. We are to... Here, let me just get the hair out of your face. Okay. We are to read it, meditate on it. That means think very deeply about it and obey it. Does the Bible say that we're to honor God's word? Oh, yes. Um, in Psalm chapter 119, verse 40, it says, Your word is very poor. Uh, sorry, your word is very pure. Therefore, your servant loves it. My goodness, there are so many aspects to reverencing the name of God. Let's see, we are to reverence his name, titles, attributes, ordinances, word, and, and, what's next? His works. His works? What are they? Well, his works are the things that God has done, his creation, all that he has made, his salvation, how he saves us through Jesus, 
These are things that God has done, and when we speak of them, we should do so with respect. In Job chapter 36, verse 24, we were reminded, remember to magnify his work of which men have sung. And in Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, we have another scene in heaven in which people in heaven cry out, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments have been manifested. God's works are wonderful and we should speak of them with great respect. But the frustrating thing is that I've failed in all these areas. I've not treated God's name, titles, attributes, ordinances, words, and works with proper reverence. I've taken his name in vain. I've not been respectful during the Lord's Supper. I, I haven't paid attention when God's word was being read in church. Or during the sermon, I haven't praised God for all that he's done in creating this wonderful world or in sending Jesus, his son, for my salvation. Well, remember, Charnette, that one of the names of God, the son, is Jesus. And do you know what the name Jesus or Yeshua, as it is pronounced in Hebrew, means? No. Jesus or Yeshua means Yahweh saves. The Lord saves. And do you know why Jesus was given a name that means Yahweh saves? Um, because he saves us? Well, exactly. The angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, and she will be bring forth a son. Now, she is Mary. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for, she, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21. How did Jesus save his people from their sins? By going to the cross and dying for our sin in our place, and by rising from the dead on the third day. And because Jesus died for our sins, we can have all our sins washed away. But how? By believing in Jesus, by trusting that he died on the cross for your sins and that he rose from the dead so that you can be saved and live with him forever in heaven. What a kind and gracious God we serve, that he forgives even when we do not honor his name in the way that we should. Well, that's because God is a God of grace. He forgives those who repent and believe. Thank God for that. Well, that's all for today, everyone. Be sure to drop by next week when, Lord willing, we will learn about what is forbidden in the third commandment, what is not allowed. In the meantime, remember to show reverence for God's name. Goodbye.